There has been some good news on the economic front for India lately. In its World Economic Outlook, the International Monetary Fund stood by its real GDP growth forecast of 9.5% for 2021 and 8.5% for 2022. On the other hand, the IMF cut its China growth projections for 2021 and 2022 by 10 basis points each to 8% and 5.6% respectively. Thus, India looks set to get the tag of the world's fastest growing large economy this year and retain it next year. Keep in mind, however, that while the Chinese economy had grown 2.3% in FY21, the Indian economy had contracted by 7.3% owing to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, in the short term, the Chinese economy is facing several headwinds. Amid a struggling property sector facing tighter policy measures and a looming energy crisis, China's economic growth tumbled more than expected in the third quarter. As The Economist recently explained, China's economic growth at present is suffering a triple shock from energy, property and the pandemic. The woes of the indebted Chinese property giant Evergrande are also well known across the world by now. Another dampener is the fact that the Chinese government has imposed severe restrictions on the country's tech companies. Meanwhile, the good news for India continues. The Reserve Bank of India and Standard & Poor's have also retained India's FY22 growth projections at 9.5%. Some others are even more optimistic. For instance, this is what Niti Aayog Vice Chairman Rajiv Kumar said in his keynote address at the Business Standard BFSO Insight Summit on October 19. As I said that FY22 uh, will, uh, will of course uh, see a growth of 10.5% uh, or maybe even more. That's, that's the way I would look at it. Then there is the continuing export boom along with the surge in tax revenue and falling inflation. The shrinking pile of bad debt burdening the banking system is another bright spot. Let's not forget the booming corporate profits, the optimistic industrial production numbers and the continuing surge in the tally of unicorns. There are also government programs like Kati Shakti and asset monetization which are expected to generate some momentum. But there still are some doubts over whether rapid growth can be sustained in the medium term. Here's what we could do. Growth momentum can be sustained provided uh, we can create the conditions that are conducive to such higher growth. And those conditions are essentially how do you create more consumption demand? And at the same time, you also make sure that investment demand also picks up. Right now, uh, both investments and consumption are a uh, little subdued and we need to create more, more investment and uh, also uh, boost consumption. It is easier to, to, to create consumption demand, but it is more difficult to give a rise to investment demand. But in the current situation, you don't see the private sector going in for any additional investment in a big way because their capacity utilization level is fairly subdued uh, at around 70 to 75%. Now, if that is the case, then the private sector cannot be relied upon in meeting the economic requirement of giving rise to investment. So the government will have to play a critical role in boosting investments in the economy to sustain growth in the medium term. And uh, this investment rise from the government sector, uh, most probably in the infrastructure areas, can lead to a rise in consumption demand so therefore, a virtuous cycle can be created uh, over the medium term to, to maintain the momentum in India's economic growth. But the big question is whether that investment momentum uh, can be triggered by government's planning uh, and whether the government's fiscal concerns will inhibit its plans 
to give an investment boost. India is not just the union government. India has got around 30 other state governments, uh, which are also responsible for giving some sort of push to investments in the economy. Unfortunately, these states uh, are not doing very well as far as their capital expenditure is concerned. So therefore, it is not just the center, but also the states uh, whose budget size, as you would know, uh, is almost 25% more than the center's budget size. So therefore, these states will also have to increase their investment. Unfortunately, in the current situation that we see, the states are not investing adequately uh, in, in the capital project or investments. So therefore, India's medium-term growth momentum depends crucially on how well the center invests in the coming months and how the states manage to use their savings and, uh, and other uh, avenues of raising resources uh, to give a, um, a push to investors. If the projections for FY22 and FY23 come true, India will once again get to taste the high growth rates of the 2000s. However, a lot needs to be done if that pace is to be sustained going forward. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.